Good afternoon, everybody. It is time for Snap Count Monday with a little bit of an addition this week. We uh, expanded things out just a little bit this time. It was necessary because of something going on with this team that's kind of unconventional and interesting. So we'll get to that in a minute here. We're going to start with the running backs, as we always do, though. And before I get to even that, let me just say, 73 snaps by the offense in this game. 73. A new season high. Um, we've had some games where the offense got in their snaps. They got in plenty. But 73 is a new high watermark. So that, I think, really demonstrates better than anything else how dominant that offense was in the last quarter and a half when the game looked like it was in danger and then they just marched down the field three straight times for touchdowns. Just packed the game away, didn't even let Arizona back in. And that's why you get a result like this where you run 73 offensive plays. Uh, Ken Walker got 56 snaps, and I'm going to say it again. I mean, th this is a career high for him, so obviously it's quite a bit of action. And the plays that he was in ended with the ball in his possession more than half the time. So let's be a little careful here, okay? You, you look at the um, rest of the uh, snap splits. DJ Dallas only got two snaps. I know he's not the best, but you can get him out there for 10 snaps a game. Take a little bit of the workload away from Walker. You don't need to completely get rid of the DJ Dallas snaps. I know this game was close throughout. I know it was competitive. I know we were trying to, you know, make sure we had our best players on the field. I understand that. But DJ Dallas has shown an ability to do positive things in, the, in this league. Don't completely forget about him. And I don't want to see Walker playing 56 snaps in a game, really. I know there were a lot of snaps, and I know most of them were competitive because the game was close. But let's uh, let's try to be cautious here. 56 snaps for a running back is a lot. Travis Homer got most of the rest with 21. That makes sense. He's the third down back. He's a good blocker, good pass catcher. Does all the things you want a third down back to do. So that's fine. But... DJ Dallas, don't forget about him. He can do some things. He's definitely a good option to at least take some of this load off of Walker. As you can see, I mean, you look at the uh, games so far this season. His workload has basically been aggressively increasing. So I definitely want to preach caution here. Walker is not a player who's had any kind of injury history, but that doesn't mean you want to overwork him in his rookie year. So... Hopefully, going forward, we find a third back we can use. Wide receiver, you've got DK Metcalf with 59, so he played... Maybe he would have played a little bit more if he was fully healthy, but he basically played uh, as much as he normally would in games like this. T Tyler Lockett had a few less with 54, so they're definitely getting held out a little bit, but they are cranking through, and they are still doing quite well. Um... Okay, so Dwayne Eskridge. Um, I asked the question in the video I made yesterday. I wasn't even sure how much he was on the field. Well, he was on the field a lot. He actually got almost 40 snaps, more than half the total number of snaps. So he was out there. He just did not catch a single pass or touch the ball once. So, yeah, we, we are... I know it's only a year and a half into his career... I know he's a good blocker. <laughs> he is. He actually is a good blocker. I know he's a good decoy, but in terms of us actually getting production out of D. Eskridge, it's just not happening. And I was not a big D. Eskridge hater when we drafted him. I, I, I looked at him and I went, I can see how this guy becomes a valuable part of this offense, but it, it's just not happening. Here we are, halfway through his second season, and... It doesn't seem like there's any trust between him and Gino. Doesn't seem like there's any strong understanding of what routes to run or what 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 the offense is from him. So, yeah, we're we're going down that bad path. There's no other way to put it. Goodwin was out. Penny Hart played one snap, and Derek Young played 14. So he actually was the fourth most utilized receiver, and the only receiver who got utilized in any significant way after the top three. So. As you can see, we made it through this Cardinals game, putting up 31 points with 
limited soldiers to work with on at wide receiver. Uh, tight end is as normal, maybe a little bit less in terms of the raw snap count, a percentage, but the effectiveness was still there. So Fant 44, Disley 43. So Fant actually outsnapped Disley by one this game, and he paid off big time. He had the best game of his Seahawks career. And Colby Parkinson with 29. So in terms of percentage, it's a little bit less than what we've come accustomed to, but not radically so. Um, which is kind of interesting regardless because of the Cardinals' weaknesses against uh, tight ends. But it was a very effective game for the tight ends. So if, if less, sometimes less is more. Maybe this was an instance where less was a little bit more. So Disley still the leading snap getter for the tight ends, but it's pretty close. And Parkinson still getting utilized a fairly healthy amount. We've got a nice cadence at tight end right now. And we're going to unveil the offensive line here. And I have to do it because of the rotation we have at right guard between Gabe Jackson and Phil Haynes. I, I got to do it. So <clears throat> most of this stuff is going to be not particularly interesting. But I did backfill it regardless just for fun. So, just to run the season down real quick for everybody, Cross has played every snap except for the last two snaps of the game against the Cardinals. Stone Forsyth actually got to play for the two kneel downs. I didn't notice it when we were playing, but Stone Forsyth actually hit the field for the last two kneel downs. Cross was not in the game. I don't know why, but um, he, he wasn't out there. Also... I believe Kyle Fuller was at guard for those two kneel downs at the end of the game as well. Not Gabe, not Haynes, but it was Fuller. Again, I don't know why, but it doesn't really matter. They're kneel downs, right? They're kneel downs. Austin Blythe has played every snap this year except for when he got hurt against the Giants, and Kyle Fuller came in and took all the rest of those snaps. Damian Lewis has played every snap since week three because he missed week one and week two. He went down early. And I believe Phil Haynes took over for him in that game. And he was also taking over for him in that first game when he was completely unavailable. Um, Abraham Lucas has played every snap. But the really compelling stuff would be what's going on at right guard between Gabe Jackson and Phil Haynes. Gabe got hurt in week five against the Saints. Phil Haynes came in and took the rest of his snaps. He got a full fleet of snaps the next week. The week after that. He played most of the game, but had to leave because of an injury, uh, a concussion. Uh, Kerhan came in, and this is where his 24 snaps came from. And then he's played about two-thirds of the game against the Giants and about half the game against the Cardinals. So this is not an injury thing. This is a rotation thing. You don't usually see rotations on the offensive line, but we feel like it's the best way to get good value out of Gabe Jackson and also get good value out of Phil Haynes. So you're going to see this a lot this year. Gabe's going to start, going to play until he feels like he can't play anymore. Phil Haynes goes in. It actually works out okay because Phil Haynes paired up with uh, Abe Lucas on the right side. Pretty deadly run blockers in tandem. So at the end of a game, if Phil Haynes is in there, they can just road grade their way to victory behind Haynes and Lucas. So... It's not the worst setup. I don't know how long it's going to last, but it sounds like we feel like it's the best way to still get good value out of Gabe and also not force him out there in situations where he's not going to be able to keep up. And again, right now it's working. So that's your offensive line snap count. That's the main interesting thing. Jumping over to the defense now, 63 snaps on defense, and that was with us missing a bunch of tackles. If we tackled well against the Cardinals, they may have had like 50 snaps. Because how many times did we get them in third and long and give it up because we missed a tackle? So, still really good. 63 snaps is the second lowest total of the year. The only time we had fewer was week three against Atlanta. And the reason, part, big reason why we had so few snaps against the Falcons was because they would score so fast and put our offense right back out on the field that they didn't need that many plays. They were still scoring. This game, no, we were shutting them down for most of it. So when you only have 63 snaps in a game on your defense, you get to really limit the load on a lot of your players. Like, uh, look at the defensive line here. We got Puna Ford with 37, Shelby Harris with 34, 
Quentin Jefferson with 32. Those three guys are the only guys with any kind of significant workload. LJ Collier had 19 snaps. Al Woods had 17. And Monet had four. And I know it was a matchup thing. I know maybe to a certain extent you didn't want Monet in there against a team that was going to be pass first. But the Cardinals still ran the ball a decent amount. And by the way, Monet, I believe, had the game of his life against the Cardinals a few weeks ago. So the fact that he's now basically not playing, that tells you that he probably won't be here next year. I think we're done with him. Um, maybe it's a matchup thing. I don't know. But I believe there's a very easy out of his contract this upcoming offseason. So that is telling me that we've already kind of uh, moved on from him because the last three games combined, he's played like 30 snaps. Three games, 30 snaps. So he's probably... It, we're, we're just not finding a way to make it work. But uh, yeah, defensive line, we kept things very, very very, very balanced, and nobody had to work too hard. Very nice. Edge rushers, with no Daryl Taylor, we had Nawosu play 49 snaps, which is actually a pretty fair number. I'd like it a little bit lower, but 49, I mean, he, he's played more snaps than that in pretty much every game this year, except for the Falcons game. Maffei had 26 snaps, and usually he gets somewhere around that percentage, so Maffei still doing good. Uh, Bruce Irvin had 37 snaps, so played a lot of the game. Uh, not as much as he did the previous week, which was good, but um, 37 snaps is healthy. Onu Giogu actually, I think, made like three tackles in this game on 11 snaps. So pretty impactful. Not bad. Seemed to play okay to my eye. Nothing over the top, but I thought Onu Giogu did his job. And on a day when we really needed a fourth body, he managed to be that fourth body. Inside linebacker, all right, so Jordan Brooks, 63 snaps. He played every snap like he pretty much always does. Cody Barton, 27 snaps, so like 40%-ish. Basically, he's a part-time player now. He, he, on average, I think plays about half the snaps if you average it out over the last uh, four games when the defense has gotten better. And he's played okay, like nothing... Incredible. He's not. He doesn't look like a Pro Bowler, but he looks like a competent player now. So it's been a big, big kick in the right direction to get Barton off the field and let him, I guess, pace himself. And if we can keep this up the whole year, then maybe we don't have the disaster at inside linebacker that we think we do. And the main reason why we've been able to do these things, not put a giant workload on defensive linemen, edge rushers, linebackers, basically the front seven is by getting defensive backs out there a little bit more. So you look at the cornerbacks, of course, Woolen and Jackson played every snap because they're outside corners. But Kobe's almost always out there now too, 54 snaps. He's out there not um, close to, actually, I think over 80% of the time. So Kobe Bryant getting a ton of burn right now, playing. Uh, he didn't have a great game against the Cardinals, admittedly. The tackling was not great. He got beat a little bit. It wasn't terrible or anything. But again, I'm going to keep saying it. He's playing out of position. It's understandable. And Ryan Neal plays every snap as a safety. Sometimes he comes up and basically plays like cornerback or linebacker. But safety, by and large, every snap, as expected. Quandre Diggs plays every snap. And here's where we really gain the ability to keep things light on the front seven. Josh Jones, 31 snaps. And he actually made a couple plays. He recovered a fumble. And he made some decent plays in run defense. Like there was that one jet sweep at the or fly sweep at the goal line that Arizona ran where he made the tackle at the one. Made Arizona waste a few more seconds off the clock. And that that in that stage of the game, that kind of stuff matters. So half the game, which is a good chunk more than he's been playing lately since he lost the starting safety job, basically. And he looked okay. So some of these guys, like Cody Barton like Josh Jones, that have been big disappointments so far, maybe the key is just to only let them play a little bit. But that has allowed the front seven to not be so overtaxed, and I think that's been a big reason why the defense has turned it around. So pretty much all good news here. The worst I can say is that we need to take it easy on Ken Walker a little bit, but um, hopefully that comes. Hopefully that's something we feel more comfortable with later in the year. And uh, yeah, those, those are your snap counts. I'm going to get out of here. Going to be on Twitch tonight, Valhalla, 
Maybe some soul hackers. See you guys there. Go Hawks.